Hello, today I'm going to show you how you can access and plot the NOAA surface temperature anomaly data in Python. You can find the data here, I'll put a link to this page in the description. And if you use these data, please make sure that you cite them using the recommended citation here in your list of references, just like you would cite any other publication. I'll also include this in my uh, description. If we want to access the data, we can go to access, but we can see the data are available via threads. And the data come in a netcdf file, and we can access them through this link. We have a lot of options here, but I'm going to show you how to access the data through OpenDAP. Now, OpenDAP allows you to access data over the internet without downloading the file to your own computer first. So we can just copy this data URL here, and we can use this in Python when we're loading in the file, just like we might load in some file from an absolute file path to a location in our computer. So in Python now, we're going to use three libraries today. That's matplotlib, xarray, and cartab. I'm working in a clean Conda environment today, so I'm going to have to install these libraries first. So we can do that in our terminal, like pip install xarray, pip install matplotlib, pip install cartopy, and also xarray uses netcdf4 in the back end, so we're going to have to install that as well, so pip install netcdf4. No, we don't have to import this. So now let's load in the data. We're going to take that URL that we have just taken from the OpenDAP page, and we're going to create a variable xrds, which is going to be our x-ray object, and make that equal to xr.opendataset and the URL that we've provided above. And we're going to print that just to have a look at this in my terminal. So I'm going to run this now. Now let's just expand this terminal and have a closer look. So we have an X-ray dataset that has four dimensions, time, latitude, longitude, and some vertical dimension. And each of these dimensions has an associated coordinate variable. So there's a variable time, which has a dimension of time, because this is a one dimensional array. We then have a data variable, this anom, and this has four dimensions, time, z, latitude, and longitude. Although z has a length of one, which we can see here, so this is essentially only a three dimensional array. This anom variable is the data that we're interested in. There are 66 global attributes, but only 12 are displayed here. So if we want a better overview, we can make this terminal smaller again. And the global attributes can be accessed in a Python dictionary. So to display each attribute and value as key value pairs, we can do something like for attribute value in XRDS dot Atras dot items and then a colon and print attribute value. Let's run this again. And if I expand the terminal again, we can see all of the attributes related to this data set. So if we scroll through, this should include all the information we want to know about the data. So we shouldn't have to look anywhere else. We might also want to access the variable attributes associated with this anom variable. So if I minimize this again, and I can do that by just typing in here anom to call that variable, run this again, and expand the terminal. We can see some useful information like the units, uh, what a valid range for the data might be, the standard name, which is taken from the CF standard name table. So if I go to the CF standard name table and I search for it here, I should be able to open this up and see some description and get a better understanding of what these data are. I actually have a whole playlist on how to work with NetCDF files in Python. So I'll put a link down to that in the description if you want to learn more about how to access different components above NetCDF file and understand uh, what is meant by each of them. But for now, we'll proceed with trying to access and plot these data. So let's get rid of this for loop. If I want to access the values, I can create a variable anomalies, or whatever you like to call it, equals xrds 
a num dot values and if I print this you'll be able to see how this looks and in the terminal you can see this now long three-dimensional array of values maybe you want to write these data to a pandas data frame you can do that df equals xrds dot to data frame and I will just print the head of that data frame so you can see this here and if you wanted to write this data out to a csv file you could do that like df dot to csv and file dot csv or whatever you like to call this and run that again and that file has been created we can have a look at that here and there we go if we scroll down you can see that we do have values but we don't need to create a data frame in order to plot the data we know that this is a time series of data so what we want to do is select data for a single time so first let's look at the time coordinate variable we can print this xrds time and from the preview of the array we can see that we have one value for each month so let's go and select a subset of the data we can create a variable desired date and make that equal to for example 2021-0801 month first then day of the month then we can create data for desired date equals xrds.cell for select time equals desired date now if we're sure that this time exists we can run it like this if we're not sure that this date exists but we want to find the nearest data to that date we can do method equals nearest and I'm going to print this out if I expand my terminal we can see that what we've created is a new x-ray data set for only a single date and we can see the date selected here so this now only has three dimensions latitude longitude and z but because z is a value of one our non-values are essentially a two-dimensional array that we can go and plot we can just do data for desired date and on for the variable we want to plot and dot plot and then write plot dot show to show a preview of that and there we go that was pretty easy it's already assigned a sensible color range that's centered around zero we can see the long name and the units for the variable plotted alongside the color bar and the long name and units are plotted for the longitude and latitude and above we can see the time that's been selected but by itself this is not that nice to look at it'd be good if we had the coastlines plotted to provide some context then maybe we want to choose a different projection so this is where matplotlib and carta p come in so i'm going to create some space here after we've selected our data what we're going to do first is initialize our figure make that equal to plot dot figure and we can provide a size for our figure as well if we want fig size equals uh, 16 wide and 8 high and we're going to add an axis so we can call that ax equals plot dot axes and we're going to assign a projection here so we can do projection equals and I'm going to choose CCRS this is from Carter B up here and we can go online to find a list of projections we can choose from so I'll put a link to this page in the description but if you just google um, Carter P projections you'll probably find it and we can scroll down and see a lot of different projections that we have available to us I'm going to choose this one where the poles don't seem quite as large so I can do dot and copy this and now we're going to edit this line to plot the data to the axis so we can write ax equals ax and we're going to transform the data to the projection that we've selected I'm just going to call this transform for now 
and I'm going to create this variable up here. And that's going to be equal to ccrs dot plate carry and brackets. And we're going to use this transform every single time we plot something else onto our axis. And let's plot our coastlines below that. We can do that with just axe dot coastlines. And let's have a look at how that looks. Great, that looks better. One thing you might notice if we look down here towards uh, the South Pole, there are a lot of spaces where we have this white. And this is where we don't have any values. But this might be a bit confusing since white is also the color um, used when there is an anomaly of zero. So what we're going to do now is plot a different color wherever we don't have any data values. So there are probably different ways to do this, but what I'm going to do is create a patch and fill the whole area of the axes with a certain color, and then I'm going to plot the data on top of that. So to do this, we first need the extent of the plot, because we're going to apply this patch over the whole area of the plot. So we can do x min, x max, y min, y max equals x dot get extent. Then we're going to use our transform here that we created up here. And then we're going to add our patch, x dot add patch. And we can do plot dot rectangle. Remember that before we transform the data, the axis is a rectangle. We can open up some brackets. And we can see in the description up here, the first value we need is the X and Y as a tuple. So we need another set of brackets. This is going to be X min, Y min. And then we're going to assign the width and the height. So outside this bracket, the width is equal to X max minus X min. And the height is equal to Y max minus y min. Then we want to assign what color we want. So we can do face color equals, and I'm going to use gray. Then transform again is equal to transform. And if we want to make sure that it plots at the bottom, we can do z order is equal to minus one. So let's try that again. And there we go. Now we have this up and going. If we want to check a separate month, we can just go back to here and type in a different date. Uh, for example, let's have a look at 1921 for the same month. And perhaps I'm surprising there's a lot more blue on this plot. If you want to make sure that the color range is the same, regardless of which date you plot, you can do that by revisiting this line here and writing v min equals, let's say minus 10 and v max equals 10. This has overwritten the color map that's been used so we can choose our color map of our own. So if we do C map, and I'm going to use seismic, but you can go to this page of different color maps that are available in matplotlib and choose one that you like. These are all of the divergent ones that are available. I'll put a link to this in the description. And let's run that again. And there we go. It might be that we want to use the data to tell us what our range should be. So we can do that. So we can do min anon equals xrds anon dot min to extract the minimum value from that variable. And we can do max and arm equals xrds and arm dot max. I guess it's unlikely that they center around zero, so we can get the absolute maximum, abs max, is equal to the maximum of two numbers, the absolute value of min and arm, and max and arm. And then we change this here to minus abs max and abs max and plot that again. So I hope you found this video useful. 
If you did, like and subscribe. And if this video does quite well, I'll do some more videos showing you how to access some different important data sets in Python. And if you have any suggestions for what they might be, just let me know in the comments. I'll see you next time.